How do black holes form? Where do they come from? In a star, in all the stars, we have a lot of hydrogen. A lot of hydrogen. Stars are made up of hydrogen. And there is so much hydrogen, and they are so massive, that the attraction between particles, which is what we call gravity, is so great it really pulls them tight together. And after they get tight enough, hot enough, they start fusing together, giving off all this energy as the hydrogen turns into helium. And a little bit of the mass disappears and turns into energy. And that's why they give off light and heat. Okay? But every time some hydrogen turns into helium, some of the hydrogen inside the star is used up. And then some more does, and it's used up, and it's used up. And so over billions of years, because stars are very big, some bigger than others, but over billions of years, all of the hydrogen in a star is used up, and then all you have is a star made of helium. When the star is just made of helium, it's like the fire goes out. Because helium is what the hydrogen turns into when it gives off the matter, and so the star starts to die. It starts to go dim. It starts to go cold. The energy that's coming off of this fusion reaction is what keeps the atoms pushed apart and keeps it so hot. When that reaction stops, then the helium atoms start collapsing closer and closer together because there's no energy pushing them apart. And pretty soon, a great big sun collapses down into something the size you could hold in your hand, and yet it still has the same weight of the sun. So it has an enormous weight. And when you bring all of those atoms that close together, the gravity or the attraction becomes enormous. When you're experimenting with magnets and you hold them apart, you can feel a little bit of attraction, but as you get them closer, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and so it is with gravity. And the gravity soon becomes so strong that it pulls in matter, and it even pulls in electromagnetic waves or light going by. If it gets too close to the dying star, it sucks it in. And so just think about it. If you've got an object that is sucking in all the light going by, it looks black because the light doesn't reflect off, does it? It just gets sucked in and disappears. And so that is what we call a black hole. It's a place where there is so much gravity that pulls everything in. It even pulls in light. Around the edge of the black hole is what we call the event horizon. That's the magic line in space. If you cross that, you're too close, you're going to get sucked in. If you stay outside, you might be able to get away, especially if you're light. But the event horizon, anything that goes inside the event horizon goes into the black hole. Now this is where it gets kind of strange, because inside the black hole, Weird things happen. The laws of physics seem to break down. The laws of physics that work on the Earth and they work in the universe, all of a sudden, when they get into a black hole, they just kind of break down. And in the middle of the black hole, there is a point the scientists call the singularity. As you start getting closer and closer to a black hole because of the gravity, <laughs> there's warpage of space-time, and so time slows down, slows down, slows down. And when you get at the singularity, according to the standard model and what most scientists agree on today, time stops. So it just really messes up a lot of things when you've got this black hole sucking in everything. Anything that goes in will never get out. And a lot of scientists are spending a lot of time trying to figure out what the heck. For a long time, no one even believed there was black holes. They were discovered theoretically with the math. 
coming from Einstein's formulas long before we actually discovered them. But now we found out, yep, there are black holes. We can even make them in the laboratory, teeny ones. But the interesting thing is it's turning out they're everywhere. And they're super massive. That means really big. Mm -hmm. Really big black holes in the center of every galaxy. And to me, that's very suspicious. You've got a big galaxy, which is a group of all these stars. And in the middle, you've got a big, supermassive black hole. Is that a coincidence? If it happened one time, maybe. But we're starting to find out it's happening everywhere. And that made me think, wouldn't it be crazy if we could have a new theory? <laughs> what if we could have a new idea about these? What if, in fact, inside a black hole, it's not skunks? <laughs> <laughs> what if it's something else? I thought, I would love to invent a theory on what's inside of black holes. And some of you know me well enough to know if I were to invent a theory of what's inside of black holes, I would, I would invent <laughs> hydrogen. We hydrogen didn't cars, know that. hydrogen yeah. house, hydrogen black holes. And that is my theory. Oh. My theory is that inside of a black hole is hydrogen. Now you say, well, wait a minute. Explain. Okay. Thought you'd never ask. <laughs> so, let's take one of the black holes that's made by a star collapsing. So here's our helium atom, and just imagine all these helium atoms all smashed down together so that they are so close they create a gravity that can even suck in light. Light's going by. <sighs> Keep that in mind. Now, while you're thinking about that, remember where that light came from. The light that's going by, it's made by two hydrogen atoms smashing together and losing a little speck of matter that turns into energy. Boop, 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 boop. And that's the light that's going by that's getting sucked in. You smash two hydrogens together, matter's turned into light, it goes out into space, and the hydrogens become helium. What would happen if you put the light back in the helium, it turned into mass, and popped back into two hydrogens? It would be like stars running backwards. And I believe we're going to find out that that might be exactly what's happening. And that is the basis of my theory. Now, I call my model, you know, there's the standard model that everyone agrees with. I had to think of a name for my model. I thought uh, red model, the blue model. Yep, the Billings model. <laughs> I named it the Billings model. And in the Billings model, there are a couple interesting things that happen. I want to show you my black hole. This is more like what I think a black hole looks like. It's not like a little bag with a, a hole with skunks in it. It's actually a ball of helium, atom, helium atoms that are black because they're not giving off any energy. But they have such intense gravity because they're so close together that they're sucking light in. Every time light tries to go by, so we can't see it. That makes sense? So that's what a black hole looks like. And I look at that and I say, you know what? That doesn't look like a hole to me. And so that's why I named it a black star because it was a star, and then it burned out and turned black. So it's a black star. Yes. And it looks like that. And if light goes by on this side, it gets sucked in. That side, it's not just a hole that goes in, it's a hole all the way around. You get too close, <laughs> in you go. <laughs> and what happens to the light that goes into a black hole? Now some people, you ought to hear some of the theories. Some people say it goes into a new dimension. And you know, I don't even know what that is, so I can't agree with it, but a lot of people think that. But I say what happens when that energy gets sucked into the black hole, the light gets turned back into matter. And the matter then turns the helium back into two hydrogens. And so 
as light is getting sucked in to this black star, you're getting more and more and more hydrogen. And when you get enough, guess what? It starts fusing again and the light comes back on and we have a new star. So, lit stars give off their light until they run out of hydrogen and then they become black stars, or dead stars. And then they gather up light with their magnetism until they get enough hydrogen to ignite again. Secret is keep your hydrogen tank full. <laughs> yeah. Does that make any sense to yes. anybody? Mm -hmm. And so now that goes a little bit further. You know, Einstein has this neat equation. He says the amount of energy that you get from a fusion or an atomic reaction is the amount of matter that is destroyed or turned into energy is equal to the mass times the speed of light times the speed of light. That's his formula. Okay, remember we saw it a few minutes ago. And that formula, let's, let's put it up again. The energy we're talking about is the light that's coming off, and it's not just light, it's all kinds of electromagnetic energy that's coming off the star is equal to the amount of mass that disappeared when the helium was formed times the speed of light times the speed of light. Well, if I'm going to have a theory, i got to have a formula, don't I? So I do. I happen to have a formula. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you in a minute. But just think of this now. This then could look like a star. Now you say, well, we can't really see it. Now my, my friends... At least they used to be my, my friends that are physicists are going to say, well, now, wait a minute. There's a few problems with your theory. And I say, oh, you must be one of the hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of problems with my theory based on traditional understanding of physics. But I think there's some real interesting answers to some of these problems. And I think they are something we ought to look at real carefully. I think it's going to be kind of fun to see what kind of reaction I get. Now, I want to show you my formula because this is the next piece that is a key. And if someone's going to look at this mathematically, they're going to need this as a starting point because I'm saying something even bigger than I've said so far. And you mathematicians that take a cellus and are learning math, which is the language of science, you're going to see this right away. This is my formula. E minus mc squared equals zero. Now that's a lot like Einstein's formula. Still has E, still has mc squared, but I have a zero. And if you study this, you realize that I'm saying something. I'm saying that in the universe, the whole universe, the amount of energy minus the amount of mass times the speed of light, equals zero. In other words, the amount of energy is balanced with the amount of mass corrected by the speed of light. So if you take the mass times the speed of light away from the energy, you get zero. Or in other words, the energy in the universe is equal to the mass times the speed of light in the universe. And I'm saying, those two things, in my theory, are always balanced. So when some light gets sucked into a black hole, somewhere else, some hydrogen combines together and the mass disappears and turns into light. So that the amount of mass in the universe is always a constant. It doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Now, this is kind of interesting. One of the things that Einstein said that I find real intriguing is we were talking about the cosmos, the fact that we had a big bang and everything's flying apart. And, and he says, the, the thing I don't like about the big bang theory is that it kind of predicts a temporary universe. This one is a model that doesn't predict a temporary universe. And I just have a hunch in my theory that the universe isn't temporary. And 
So it'll be interesting to see what people think about that. So what do you think? I think it's fascinating. Would this be a good time to show the poster? So some of you are going to write down, so what is a dark star? Well, there it is. A dark star is my vision, with my theory, of what a black hole is. It's just a really, really highly dense group of helium atoms that are sucking up light so they can make hydrogen, so they can start shining again. Stars like to shine. <laughs> That's why they're doing it. And so our wonderful uh, artist, illustrator, uh, Ryan, mm -hmm. created a poster for me of how I envision the universe, and I'd like to show it to you. Here is a drawing of a dark star, and around the event horizon there, that's where the, inside the little line, you can see uh, things happening like they do around the event horizon. And then as the light goes into the center, it eventually turns into matter, which then has to be heavier than the helium, so the helium pops back into two hydrogen atoms. When you look at it, it's kind of like the hydrogen fuel cell car in a way because we burn hydrogen in an engine by combining it, we'll pretend this is oxygen now, we combine it with an oxygen, we get H2O, we get water, the hydrogen's gone, the oxygen's gone, and water's there, but then we put electricity back in it and they pop apart again, we get oxygen back out, and we can use the hydrogen over and over again. I think the stars are trying to do the same thing. Only they don't burn it with oxygen. They burn it with, by fusing the hydrogen together, which turns into helium. But helium doesn't weigh as much as the two hydrogens did. Where did the weight go? And it went into light. And when the light goes into the dark star, it regenerates the energy. Now, I want to remind you, this is a theory. And if you go talk to your dad, if he's a physicist, and you say, Dad, guess what I learned? <laughs> <laughs> There's no black holes. They're actually just dark stars, and they're <laughs> gathering up hydrogen. Um, please explain. That's just a theory. <laughs> but uh, the point that I really want to make in this discussion today is that we can make up theories. And almost everything that we know in science came because someone made up a theory and then they researched it and they studied it and they observed and they did experiments to prove their theory was wrong or right. 